Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know how much I emphasize the power of local adjustments. They are the difference between a good photo and a great one. But let's be honest here, building precision masks for each and every area of your photo, it can be tedious and, and sometimes even overwhelming. It takes time and, and patience and a bit of skill to do it well. And while the results are, are worth it, I've always thought, what if there were easier options like the Select Sky feature? Well, with the just released Lightroom version 14.3 update, that what if scenario just became a reality. They've introduced a new feature that makes masking landscapes faster, smarter, and more intuitive than ever. And I think it's going to completely change the way we edit outdoor and landscape photos. So this is a, a typical scenario of a photograph with the, the kind of just going over the masks. Like as you can see, I use a lot of masks in my photographs. And as I kind of hover, hover over each and every one of these, you can see the areas that each one of these masks cover. Now, not every one of my photographs has quite that many masks, but every single photograph that I edit has at least a few. Here's another example right here, where you can see if I hover over these, this one only has four specific masks right here. But what's interesting is, we used to, I shouldn't say we, I used to do so many kinds of workarounds in order to achieve certain types of masks because the functionality was not available inside of Lightroom until now. So for instance, this is that same image from Iceland without the masks. So I would, oftentimes I would come up here and I would hit sky. And of course that's pretty simple. Make a real quick sky adjustment here just for example purposes. And as I toggle this on and off, you can see that that did a good job. And then what I would do is I would duplicate that mask and then invert it to make a mask for the, the ground. So I would come up here and I'd hit the three little dots and I would come up here to duplicate and invert mask. And now you can see that I've got everything but the sky covered. And then I would just do my adjustments here, maybe bring up the shadows a little bit, bring up the contrast a touch here, brighten it up a touch more. And as you can see, that has done. And then if I wanted to, for instance, target just the water in this photograph, this is what I used to do as well. So I would come up here and I'd hit the plus sign and I would come down to select objects. And for this scenario, I wanna do the paintbrush method and I would just kind of paint all around the water right through here. And Lightroom usually does a pretty good job with this. Fill it in there, let Lightroom do its thing. And as you can see, it made a pretty solid mask for the the water here. And then I would make my adjustments that I wanna apply here just like this. And as I toggle this on and off, you can see what that has done. So those are the kind of the workarounds that I used to do, but you no longer have to do that anymore, which is pretty amazing. And the results are pretty impressive as well. So let me go over here to this next photo right here. So this is that same image from another one from Iceland that I showed to kick off this video, but all of the masks are removed. So if I come up here, you'll see a new feature right here at the top that just says landscape. So if you didn't, let me just show that again. I hit the little mask button right here and that's gonna pull these up and this is where the sky feature is, background and subject, but now you have something called landscape. If you hit landscape, it's gonna go ahead and detect landscape features. You can see it's thinking right here. And then it's gonna bring up these mask options. Now what's interesting is every photo you do this on, the masks that are the mask options that it shows you are gonna be different because it pertains just to that specific photo. And for this one, as you can see, of course there is a sky one right here, one for the mountains, which you, as you can see, it did perfectly for the mountains and in water as well. So it, it highlighted all three of these right here. So if I wanna use them all, I'm gonna hit sky, I'm gonna hit mountains, and I'm gonna hit water. And then there's something down here that says create three separate masks. And that's exactly what it's gonna do. It's gonna have three separate masks for each one. And I'm gonna hit create mask here. And as you can see, all three of them are here. And what's cool is it went ahead and labeled them all as well. So the days of having to go in and double click on each one and type it out, those are over. So this is a very, very nice feature. I come up here to sky and now I can make my sky adjustments. If I wanna bring down the exposure, boost the contrast, maybe bring down the highlights a touch, boom. If I wanna adjust the mountains, if I wanna brighten them up, maybe open up these shadows a little bit here, introduce a little bit of contrast. And then the water, if I wanna add some detail, bring down the highlights a little bit, bring up the exposure a touch, maybe bring up the white point a touch, maybe come down here, boost that clarity just a little bit to really show some of that detail. And on and off, that's the water. This right here is the mountains. Let me turn these back on. And then this is the sky. And I can toggle all of them on and off with this right here. And you can see what a difference that has made. And the best part is, as you could tell, that was so easy. I didn't actually have to go in there and physically, or I should say manually make any of those masks that automatically did it. Now I had mentioned a few moments ago that 
every photo you do this on, the, the mask options that Lightroom recommends is gonna be a little bit different. So here is another example right here. Let me go back to the library. This one right here. So this is an image from the, the Dolomites in Italy. If I hit develop up here, you can see the masks that I selected. And once again, many, many masks all across here. So I'll just hover over these so you can see them real quick. So what I'm gonna do, let's just create a virtual copy of this. So create a virtual copy. There we go. And I'm gonna delete all of these masks. These are all the masks I manually put in here. So now there is no mask available. And here's that landscape button right here. So I'm gonna hit landscape. Let Lightroom do its thing. It's detecting landscape features. So we got the sky again, we got the mountains again, but now you have something that's called architecture right here. And it, it highlighted the little church right there, as you can see. And then from here, you can go ahead and make your adjustments. So I could hit sky, mountain, architecture, create new masks, and boom, there it is. Sky, mountains, architecture, all three separate masks, all labeled appropriately. So I wanna come down here to the architecture one. I can just brighten that up a little bit. Maybe bring up that white point just a touch, as you can see, to about right there to really make it stand out. If I wanna make any kind of sky adjustments, I can do that. Mountains, I can open up those shadows a little bit if I want to, just like that. So it is really cool how, it's, how it reads every single one. And I don't even think I have reached the full potential of it yet. I've, I've put in a bunch of different photos, not that I edited them all, but I just wanted, wanted to go ahead and let Lightroom detect what landscape features are in there. And it's always coming up with different ones. So I'm not 100% certain as to what that available list of different features that it looks for is, but it's pretty impressive. And here's another example, a recent image from Patagonia. I'm gonna come up here to the mask button. Let's hit landscape, let it do its thing, detecting landscape features right here. It's got the sky, it's got the mountains. Now you see something that says vegetation, and then you also see something that says natural ground. Now, sometimes these, some of these get a little overlapped a little bit, so you, you might not wanna use both masks, and this is a good example here, like natural ground and vegetation. There's a lot of overlap there. And as you can see with vegetation, it highlighted it, or it masked a lot of the area up here in the mountains. I guess it's detecting some kind of trees or something, which I probably wouldn't want. So of course, the, the water, the water, it did a very good job with the water. Look at that. As you can see, there's a little bit of water right there. And of course, all right through here. When I hover over water, it got everything. So from my experience so far in the limited time that this has been available, the water feature is usually pretty good and so is the mountains. The whole natural ground vegetation part, you, you have to play with it a little bit, but as you can see, vegetation, that is a new one that we have not seen yet. So once again, a very powerful feature. So of course I'm gonna hit sky. I definitely want the mountains. I definitely want the water. The vegetation versus the natural ground, I think I'm gonna go with the vegetation here and then create four separate masks, create those masks. And what I would do in this scenario here, open up vegetation like this, and I'm gonna hit subtract, and I'm gonna subtract with a brush. And then I'm just going to make sure my flow is at 100. And I'm just gonna remove this area up through here because I don't want it to target that area. I literally just want it to target the area that is down below. So something to that effect right there. And now I'll go ahead and make my adjustments here that I wanna do. So maybe bring up the highlights just a little bit, boost that contrast some, open up the shadows a little bit. As I toggle that on and off, you can see that right there. So. Each one of the masks obviously is not going to be perfect, but the, excuse me, the coolest part of it all is that it does so many of these masks automatically for you. If you've ever played with editing portraits in Lightroom and you select the, uh, the, the people feature for a mask that detects people, it always automatically creates masks for facial skin, for um, uh, you know hair on your face, hair on your head, eyebrows, eyes, lips, nose, all kinds of masks, it does it all automatically. And to see that functionality, move over for us landscape photographers is absolutely huge. And I really do think that it will change the way that we edit photos. If you remember back to when Select Sky first came out, I know a lot of people were a little bit hit and miss on using it, but in, in full transparency, I use Select, Select Sky on every single photo that I edit, and it does a really, really good job. And over time, it's gotten even better. So to see all that same kind of functionality come over for landscape photos is really, really cool. And I think it's gonna speed up a lot of our workflow and, uh, and honestly help to improve the photos even more. So I wanted to make sure I share that with you all today. Uh, before I wrap things up here, I do just wanna say a big thanks to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website, 
and e-commerce needs. Squarespace offers a stunning user-friendly platform to build your website. With their Blueprint AI design system, you can showcase your photography and create a standout online presence with ease. Plus, built-in Squarespace SEO tools help your site appear in more searches, making it easier for the right customers to find you. And if you're looking to sell online, Squarespace's online store feature provides everything you need to sell your physical goods, digital content, or services seamlessly. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out Squarespace dot com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I do hope that information was helpful. If you have any questions about the new Lightroom update, just leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.